it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small it makes you doubt. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. Nolik, please stop your jumping. Your head's gonna fall off. Don't worry, it won't fall off. Mm-hmm, that sounds good. Okay, I'll see you in a bit. Are you going somewhere, Tom Thomas? Me? Nowhere. Katya's coming over, so we can do our homework. I need some strawberries. Is she gonna bring the strawberries with her? You got it. And my job's to supply the whipped cream. They're so good together. Whipped cream? Do you have any? I'll go and check. Wait for me! Suka, what do they make cream from? It's made from milk, and the milk you can get from a cow. And what about whipped cream? The cow jumps up and down like you, so the cream can get whipped up. Really? I'm joking, Nolik. I looked everywhere. We've got regular cream, but there isn't whipped cream. No problem. We can whip some up right now. Cream is thick milk with a lot of fat. If you want to make whipped cream, you need to cool down the cream, add some sugar, and then beat this mixture very well. This adds tiny air bubbles that turn the cream into a delicious white fluffy foam. But it's important not to overdo it. Or instead of getting fluffy, the cream will start getting thicker and thicker until it turns into rich, creamy butter. How are we going to whip it up? Look, there's a whisk. No! Hold on! How's that? It's not working. Maybe we need to use a different bowl or something. Do you think that a bottle would work? Hmm, that's a really good idea. Now I don't have to worry about spilling this cream anymore. Shake it with both hands. That's all. I'm just too tired. The cream looks exactly the same as when you started. You didn't try hard enough. Oh, really? Then try whipping it yourself. I got it. That's who's gonna help us. Chusaka? Yeah, awesome. Bring it down. A little more. Perfect. Open it up. <laughs> Yeah? But why can't you? What a shame. It's fine. Come on over anyway. Oh, you can't reach us. You can't reach us. Oh. Oh, I'm so tired. Oh, I'm sure that at least we got the cream whipped up. Oh, see that, Zuka? There's no cream left. Just some yellow stuff. It's butter, I'm sure. We overdid it. People make so many different things out of milk, like cream or butter or frosting for cakes and cupcakes. With dry milk, sugar, and boiling water, you can make condensed milk. And if you make it cold, brrr, you get ice cream. And if the milk gets sour, no problem. Humans make all sorts of foods out of sour milk, like yogurt, sour cream, kefir, and buttermilk. 
If you drain off the extra liquid from sour milk, you'll have cottage cheese. And by boiling milk a special way, you can make all sorts of different cheeses. There are so many kinds of cheeses made throughout the world that it's hard to even count them all. And even certain kinds of chocolate can't be made without milk. You must agree that plain old ordinary milk is just one super magical, extraordinary thing. It's just awful, guys. What, Katya's not coming over? She's coming over, just without the strawberries. She didn't know that her grandmother had already used up all of them to make some jam. So you're telling us that we don't need any whipped cream? Right, Katya's bringing a cake. And she said that we'll need butter. She wants to make frosting out of it. Butter? I don't know if we have any. We got plenty. The screws. Hey, Tom Thomas, what you thinking about? Huh? For school, I have to write an essay. My very best friend. I don't know, who should I write about? What do you mean, who? Aren't I your closest friend? Of course. How could I forget to write about you? And you can keep forgetting. That's our secret, right? Don't you remember the promise you made when we met? Hmm. Sure, how could I forget? What's wrong with your socket today? Chusaka, why are these screws bothering you so badly? <laughs> What's with you? Leave them alone already. Will you just calm down? You're gonna destroy my plane. Let's get out of here. Ow! What's going on? <gasps> What's going on? Hey, if you don't turn back again, I'm not letting you go. Oh, please, don't be afraid. I'm not gonna hurt you two. I'll just ask you one question and let you go. Nolik, we can't. Don't worry about it. Quit your staring. Ask your question, boy. No way you can talk. Just, just, just tell me, who are you? Fixies. That's all. We answered. Now you let us out. Oh, wait, but what's it mean that you're Fixies? That's already question number two. You promised to let us out, didn't you? I'm sorry. You can leave now. Zenka, it's fine. I can see from his look that we can trust him. Uh, all right, we'll tell him. You gotta swear that you don't tell anyone else. I swear it. Fixies, we're the little people that live inside of machines and appliances and take care of them. Fixing them, cleaning them, and oiling them. Humans never suspect us. They think that if something breaks and then suddenly starts working again, that it happened all by itself. Well, nothing happens by itself. It happens because we, the Fixies, are living inside. Yes, without the Fixies, humans would have so many more problems with their machines. That's awesome. And so what are your names? That's already question number three. You can call me Nolik, and her name is Simka. And my name's Tom Thomas. Will you come back over? Oh, well. Uh, I was this close to becoming the first kid in the whole world to make friends with the Fixies. I thought you guys would never come back over. And we didn't plan on coming back. But then we thought it'd be really great to be the only Fixies in the whole world who are friends with the only kid in the whole world who is friends with the Fixies. Ah! <gasps> and who has told no one about us. The Fixies do everything they can do to hide from humans. They are afraid that if humans discovered Fixies, they would hunt them down and capture them and start keeping them in cages, just like pets. 
And worse than that, they would take them into their laboratories and start examining them under microscopes, even conducting scientific experiments on them. Or suppose that humans thought we'd do all their work for them, and so they decided that they didn't have to take care of their appliances any longer. Well then, let me tell you this. If humans decided that they didn't have to clean or fix their own appliances, then not even the Fixies will be able to stop them from breaking no matter what they do. That's why the Fixies are very smart to hide from humans. Okay then, I'll write about someone else. I have the very best friend ever. Period. When something's broken, he repairs it. He's the one and only No. The one and only Nolan. The remote. Hey Simka, the button got stuck on the remote. How can we get it back out of there? Look and learn, Nolik. Please help. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, oh, oh. Should I let it go now? Oh. Oops. <laughs> no, like, hide somewhere. She stole the remote. Nolik? Where are you hiding? Nolik? Hello there, Fixies. Hey, where are you? Hey, Tom Thomas, you got here just in time. Chusaka ran off with the TV remote. And so what? I can turn it on without it. And my favorite cartoon is just about to start. Forget about the cartoons, will ya? Nolik is missing. I'm afraid Nolik hid inside of the remote. And Chusaka took it. Oh, no, no, it's in big-time trouble. Tom Thomas, there must be something you can do! Chusaka, Chusaka, come here. Where is that dog hiding? I'm gonna go look in the other rooms. Simka, Tom Thomas, here I am. I'm over here. For now, I'll wait here. Chusaka's not out there. Where are you? Hey, Simka. I ran to get a pack a mat. What are you gonna do with it? I'm gonna search for the infrared ray that comes out of the remote. That's so great. But what is it? I'll explain it to you. Inside of most remote controls, there's a special type of light bulb called a light emitting diode, or LED for short. When we press a button, the LED sends an invisible infrared ray. And in the TV, there is a receiver for these invisible rays. The TV understands the command that comes from the remote control and carries it out, like changing the channel or the volume. If the rays are invisible, then how is it possible to see them? In the pack -a mat I've got these special goggles that can help me. And now what? Yell to Nolik. Get him to close the contact on any one of the buttons. Nolik! You gotta push one of the buttons down on the remote. A button? But how am I gonna do that? Wait, one second. Chusaka Chusaka with a brain full of rush. Nothing for you here. But here's something. There he is. He's over there. Chusaka, come here. Do you want a hot dog? So you want to play tough. All right, then. out for the remote's race. It's just a shame it's impossible for me to see him. What are you saying? 
You can! If you want to see infrared rays, all you have to do is look through a digital camera. Try it for yourself. Turn on the camera on a mobile telephone. Now go ahead and press any button on the remote control and point the camera toward the front of it. You'll see a bright dot on the screen of the camera. That's the light emitting diode working. It's letting off a special light that can't be seen by the naked eye. It's also possible to point the remote control at a mirror. And then through the camera, you can see how the light emitting diode turns itself on. So what that means is that invisible rays bounce off of a mirror in the same way that regular light does. So you can control the TV by bouncing the light from a remote control off of a mirror. You don't believe me? Then go ahead and try it yourself. By the way, if your toys weren't all stuffed under the bed, we would have found the remote without the goggles. Don't worry about it. When the cartoons are over, I'll put them away. So, you done watching? Time to clean up. <laughs> <laughs> the fan. Pass them on the left. Step on it. Now pass them on the right. Look out for the wall. Hit the brakes. Why didn't you hit the brakes? He was just too scared. What do you mean, too scared? Something got into my eyes. Those were your hands. My turn. Let me show you how it's really done. Oh, what's wrong with the computer? Oh, it's been really acting up for a while. It turns off by itself. It's no big deal. I just turn it back on. I don't like this at all. Come on, Nola. Let's go inside and take a look. Just like people, machines can get sick, too. They can get a very high temperature and even start coughing and sneezing. And if a machine or an appliance gets seriously sick, sometimes it can be too late to fix them at all. So wouldn't it be better if we could keep them from getting sick in the first place? Everybody knows that people who look after their health get sick less often and live longer. And the same goes for machines. Machines break less often and live longer if they're properly taken care of. That's why machines need to be checked from time to time and cleaned and oiled. And that's what's called preventive maintenance. And preventive maintenance is something that always should be kept in mind by humans and by fixies. What is what? Can you hear that? What are all those sounds? It's probably just mm, a fixie eater that woke up. What? What do you mean fixie eater? Didn't you know that inside of some appliances there live horrible monsters? They love to attack fixies and eat them up. And the smaller the fixies are, the more the fixie eater likes to eat. Eat them. Ha ha! And how come you never told me anything about big eaters before? I didn't want you to get scared! <laughs> <laughs> All right, scaredy cat, let's keep going. work without it. It has the very important job of keeping all of those other parts cool when they start heating up. 
It cools down the inside of a computer by blowing a stream of air. But if the fan gets dirty and starts working poorly, the computer might get overheated and turn off. Or it can simply break. You have to turn off your computer. How come? I'll tell you later. Part's done. Now we oil it. Let me try. All right. It's oiled up. <laughs> Just like your nose. Tom Thomas! Turn, Turn it on! Titty! And then suddenly, I hear this terrible roar of a fixator. But I wasn't scared one little bit. And I just ran right into the battle. And Simka? Oh, she was hiding somewhere. You know, she's a girl and they're all cowards. So I had to fight the monster all by myself. Ah! Oh, I guess that was an example of how girls hide like cowards when they're too scared. <laughs> well, um, yeah. The armor. 2, 24, 25. Ready or not, here, here we come. come! I heard him. He ran into the hallway. You check the kitchen, Nolik, and I'll check the living room. We forgot to check in there. There's nowhere in here for him to hide. Inside the shark. <laughs> no, like, Tom Thomas couldn't even fit half of himself inside of that shark. Yeah? Then in that huge vase. Uh-huh. He's all scrunched up in there and laughing at us. <laughs> oh! Simka! There! Did you hear that? He is in there! There's no one, but I know that I heard a hee-hee. You imagined it. Let's go take a look in the bathroom. <laughs> hm. I imagined it. <sighs> it's so stuffy inside this armor. <laughs> the arms got stuck. Where else could he be? Oh, who is that? Sick of the night, he came to life. Well, how much longer are you gonna look for me? Armor is very hard clothing worn by warriors to protect them against swords and arrows. People started making armor in ancient times, but the full body armor that knights wore didn't start until the Middle Ages. The armor worn by knights on horses was heavy. It could weigh a hundred pounds, and if a knight got knocked off of his horse, he'd need help to get back up again. By the way, the knights' horses, they wore their own heavy set of armor for protection. Hey, did you turn into statues? Tom Thomas? Is that you in there? Who else? Lift up this visor, I can barely breathe. <laughs> and how come we should do it? Cause I can't, don't you see? My arms got stuck. We see? <laughs> you look funny. Funny to you, but now I'm stuck and I can't get out of here. Come on, help me out, please. <laughs> Chusaka's just what we need right now. Chusaka, what's wrong with you? It's me. Hey, stop it. Help, I can't get up. Come on, let's undo the latches, Nolik, quickly. Thanks for helping me. It was nothing. I couldn't have done it without you. Let's put the night back together. Uh-huh. Before Dad gets back. Protective 
clothing isn't just for people who are fighting in battles. Travelers put on special nets to protect themselves against mosquitoes and gnats. And beekeepers wear protective clothes, too. If they had nothing to protect them from bee stings, their job would be quite painful. <laughs> Without their protective clothing, it would be impossible for firefighters to go into burning buildings and save people. And how could astronauts go into outer space without special clothing? It's freezing up there and there's no air to breathe at all. And that's why they wear a special costume called a spacesuit when they travel. The spacesuit not only protects astronauts from the cold, but supplies them with air so they can breathe. By the way, the Fixies also wear protective clothing so they can stay safe while they work. Well, there. Did we get it right? It looks like we got it right. Only, where's the helmet? No look went to get it. Tom Thomas! Helmet delivery! Thanks there, Chusaka. Whoa there, Warhorse. Calm yourself down. There we go. It's all back in place again. Too bad that your knight <laughs> looks like a ballerina twirling around. You see, his arm. Ugh, I can't move it. It's stuck. Here's what we'll do. Give him something to hold. Well, how's that look? Perfect. Now we can paddle into battle. <laughs> the vent. Tom Thomas. Tom Thomas. Okay. Simka Tula, check it out. It's pretty, isn't it? Oh, splendid. It's nothing but a trinket. It's completely useless. Useless? Look how well it matches my hair clip. Useful things are the kinds of things you truly need. For instance, like this rope ladder I've got. It's splendid. And where do you plan on climbing with this thing? Now this mirror here is both useful and pretty. Oh, how splendid. Tula, you say everything is splendid. Well, here's something super splendid that I bet you don't have. Oh, what is it? It's a mechanical super claw. It must be just perfect for scratching your back. <laughs> now look what I have. A photograph of Vector. And he signed it for me, too. Are you sure that's Vector? You've got a photo of the bravest fixie on the face of the entire planet? Yeah, and the most beautiful. Is it him for sure? No way. Let me take a look. Uh-uh. You'll smudge it. You've been fooled. No. Yes. Jealous? You are. Uh, uh, ah! My photo! Oh, no! What was that? Uh, a draft. This is completely your fault. It's not my fault. It's your fault for bragging so much. Please, girls, stop fighting. Let's go find it. To lose a picture signed by the most famous Fixie ever. It will be horrible when that picture of a Fixie is found by humans. So where could it be? <gasps> I know how we can find it. Exactly. We'll blow a bubble and watch which way it goes as it floats away. We'll follow it and find your picture. Do you know why you can blow bubbles out of soapy water? At the surface of any liquid, there's an invisible film that is very thin but very strong. If you want to see it for yourself, fill up a glass with water all the way to the very top. Now you need to take a coin and carefully drop it into the water sideways. Then drop in another coin, and another, and another. You'll see that the water doesn't pour out, but rises up and forms a hump. That's because the water at the top sticks together. Why? Because of a force called surface tension. Thanks to surface tension, water can form drops. It also helps us blow soap bubbles. Because when we add soap into the water, the film gets even stronger. But still not strong enough to stop the bubbles from bursting. <laughs> okay, it's ready. Now we need to blow. <gasps> <sighs> Do 
it together. And... <gasps> oh, I don't think this way's gonna work. Look, it's flying! We did it! The vent! Of course! Why didn't I think of that before? seen holes in the bathroom or kitchen that are covered with grids? Well, those are called vents. And behind the vent is a long pipe called an air duct. Unpleasant odors and musty air can be forced into the duct and sent out of the house. And if you want that old, stale air to leave the house even faster, open a window and let in some of the fresh air from outside. Keep the air in your home as fresh as it can be. Simka? A little mirror. It's pretty, don't you think? Oh, you girls. <laughs> You're all the same. <sighs> the scale. Chusaka, that's enough already. But what if it's something important? Come on, she's just a dog. They say that cats and dogs have a sixth sense that we don't have. What's that? Well, they feel all sorts of things that we humans don't. I better let her in. <laughs> Mom and I will be home before dinner. Please remember to give Chusaka her food. Love, Dad. Oh, how could I have forgotten this? I just can't believe it. You believe in a sixth sense now, don't you? Uh-huh. Only it looks like for Chusaka, it's a sense of hunger. How much food should I give her? Look, it's all written on that chart. For each kilogram of the dog's weight, serve one level scoop at every feeding. Uh-huh. I got it. How many scoops is Chusaka? Oops, I mean, how many kilograms? I don't know. Then what should we do? You don't know? We'll weigh Chusaka, that's what we'll do. With what? With a scale. There's one standing in your dad's office. You're right, let's go. I was wondering, does it bother your mom that only your dad has his own office and not her? Nah, mom says she's got her own office. It's called the kitchen. Hey, look, there's a scale. Did you know that humans have had scales like this for more than 7,000 years? <laughs> if we want to find out how much something weighs, we need to compare it with something that we already know the weight of. Let's say you need to weigh a watermelon. You put it on the scale's pan and it drops down. Now you keep adding weights to the other side until the two sides balance. Well, this one is too heavy, but this one is just right. Since the weight is 10 kilograms, it means that the watermelon weighs 10 kilos. And that's just how simply a scale works. Well, should we start? Chusaka. Right, like she's gonna come running. How are you gonna get her away from that bag? Huh, I know how to get her. Here, hold this little piece of food while I weigh her. This may be literal, but it's way too heavy. Just hang on. Please, hurry up! Come on! Hurry up! Done. Her weight is two kilograms. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, now we can feed Chusaka. Chusaka weighs two kilograms, so two cups will be just right then. Do you think that you can feed your pets any kind of food at all? Oh, no! For them to be healthy, pets just like humans need to have a nutritious diet. Today, there are special pet foods for birds, fish, dogs, cats, and all sorts of other pets. These foods are made with everything your pets need to stay healthy, like meat, fish, fruits, grains, vegetables, and vitamins. These kinds of foods give pets a well-balanced diet, and there's no need to cook them. They're ready to eat. Just pour them in a bowl and your dog will be happy. And so will your cat, and your bird, and your fish, too. Just be careful not to mix them up, because what's good for a fish isn't good for a dog. Each animal needs its own special food. Stop! What's wrong? What's wrong? You have to take out a piece. She ate one already. Hmm. All right. So, that's six cents. You still think it's true, right? What did you bring that for? Oh, Mom is calling. No way! How could she know it would ring? I knew that Chusaka had it. Hello? It was a sixth sense, wasn't it? The Chain Reaction Tom Thomas, what you doing? Nolik, leave me alone. No, really. What is that? Quit distracting me, will you? Nolik, look at what you've done. I? It's all because you wouldn't quit it. Wouldn't quit what? I was struggling with that thing for half an hour and you ruined it. Uh. Ugh. Other. 
What a great idea! We could work together and fix Tom Thomas's mood. And I know how. Come help me pick up this domino, will you? Everything in the whole universe is made up of atoms. Particles so extremely small that you can't even see them through a microscope. But when a tiny atom splits, it makes a tiny explosion. And that explosion can start another explosion, and another explosion, and another. And now you've got a chain reaction. And that's how a lot of tiny explosions work together to make the gigantic explosion of an atomic bomb. The deadliest weapon known to man. But atomic energy can also be used for peaceful purposes. For example, nuclear power plants use this energy to produce electricity in hot water. And nuclear-powered icebreakers can break through the thick Arctic ice so ships can sail on their way. There, all done. Nolik, bring them in. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to teach Tom Thomas how a chain reaction can work to make you feel really good. He's coming. On your marks, now. What's going on? No, really? Tom Thomas, watch this. I can't believe what I saw. How did you do that? It was just a real... A chain reaction. What? A chain reaction. The magnifying glass. Case number one. Let's begin. Well, well. I see evidence of the criminal. The criminal's fingerprints, to be exact. He won't get away with it. Why do you think she's just looking at us instead of chasing us? Oh, maybe she can't see us and we're invisible. Then how come I see you? Simka, Nolik, be careful. Don't destroy the tracks. What kind of tracks? Whose tracks are they? Shh. I have to solve a crime. A crime? What kind? Someone stole a wing from this plane, but I'm on the trail. Take a look at that fingerprint. I'm looking. Well, and so? Each fingerprint is unique, so if you can find fingerprints, that means you have a good chance to find out who left them. Class! It's been known for quite a long time that all humans have their own unique fingerprints. It's true! No two people have the exact same fingerprints, and this fact helps the police catch criminals. It starts by finding fingerprints at the scene of the crime. Then the police compare those fingerprints with the fingerprints of someone who may have committed the crime. If they match, they found the criminal. This method is called datiloscopy. Besides catching criminals, fingerprints can also be used to replace ordinary keys. When you press your finger against a special electronic lock, the lock recognizes your fingerprint, and then it's, please come on in. By the way, unlike humans, we fixies don't leave fingerprints anywhere. And that's why even the police can't find us. Now we'll put a dog on the scent of the criminal. Chusaka, sniff. Pick up the trail. Now go find. Hey, what's wrong? Chusaka's broken. We've got to fix her then. How? She's not a vacuum cleaner. She's a real live dog. Fixies know how to fix it all. Not true. Almost all. The first thing we have to do is a thorough inspection. Let's see now. Her eyes are looking quite healthy. Good. Tails in one piece. Ears are clean? Yeah. Tongue, rosy pink. Tom Thomas, stand her up on all four feet. No, paws, I mean. Uh-huh. Chusaka. <laughs> Go on, you're fine. Now I understand. Here's what's out of order. It's her right paw. But I can't see what's wrong. I wonder if something's broken on the inside. Wait. 
Maybe something really small is stuck in her paw there. Tom Thomas, we need your lens. Here. In order to examine a small object, you need a lens. A magnifying lens is a special piece of glass that is thicker in the middle than on the sides. It bends the light that passes through it. And that is why if you put this kind of lens between your eyes and something small, it looks like the thing got bigger. If you put two lenses in a frame, you get a pair of glasses. And if you add a handle to the lens, you get a magnifying glass. There it is, a splinter. It's glass, I think. Looks like it. Uh, you're right. It's possible it's from the lamp in the hallway. It broke yesterday, and I guess not every little piece got swept up. Chusaka, hey there. You're all better now. Looks like we fixed her. Tanish, she's all repaired and working. Uh, maybe we shouldn't have cured an ungrateful dog. Ah! Simka, no look, here it is. The wing that was lost. Yeah, that's great, only you still have to figure out who hid it underneath the bed there. Yeah, you still need to match the fingerprints. The fingerprints on the wing are the same as on the plane. But whose are they? And did you check your fingerprints out? Huh, all the fingerprints are mine. So I guess it was really my own fault. I just lost it somehow. <laughs> so it turns out that you were the criminal? 